Okay, so what's up guys? We're going to start by discussing the serial to browser. Why do we need to have a serial to browser solution for Arduino? When you look at IoT solutions, many IoT solutions today on the market cater to having Ethernet or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And the thing about having these communication protocols for doing any type of work in the web is that they can be expensive. So in order to work with any type of Ethernet, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you need to have either an Ethernet shield or you need to have something like Wi-Fi shield or a Bluetooth shield. You know, you'd have to have like an ESP8266, an ESP32, a W5100, a W5500, you know, some type of way that you'll be able to have the networking capability that you're looking at. What we can do is we can avoid this problem by using a serial to comport bridge with the Arduino and this will eliminate the need for us to have any type of interaction with using any type of other networking protocol. With that being said, let's take a look at the setup we'll be using. So the setup we'll be using, all we'll need is our Arduino board. This is because to keep things minimalistic, in the application, all that we'll be doing is toggling an LED and we'll also be looking at how we can interact with the dashboard by sending data to the dashboard. So we have our Arduino. The Arduino will be reading information from a potentiometer, which is a very simple resistive sensor. When it gathers that data from the potentiometer via a serial COM port connection, it will be sending that information to the computer. Now, the way that this works is that you can use the onboard, um, you know, serial to USB bridge that is on the Arduino itself. But since I use an external program, I use Atmel ICE, what I do is that I tend to use a serial to UART, um, you know, converter. So I convert the, you know, RS232 UART signals on the Arduino into, you know, USB interface so that the Arduino will be able to send data to the computer. Now this is done via a COM port. And the COM port is just a serial port on the computer that will allow the computer to read these Arduino RS-232 signals as if it were coming from, you know, the legacy serial port that used to be available on computers that you rarely see nowadays outside of industrial applications. But due to legacy reasons and ease of use, it's still used a lot today in embedded development. The way that we operate this serial port is with a Python script. Now, during this course, we'll look at actually how we can use the Python script in order to read data from the Arduino serial connection. Once we gather that connection from the Arduino serial port and it's on the computer, the computer will be acting as a Flask server. Now, Flask is a micro framework, a micro web framework that we use to do web development. So, using Flask, we'll be able to get data from the Arduino serial port, send it to the computer, the computer server will then use Flask to serve a web page that you'll be able to use as our dashboard and see the serial data on. We don't have to use our Windows machine in this tutorial. I use our Windows machine. The code should mostly work if you're using something like an Arduino with a Raspberry Pi. You can also use the Arduino with a Linux based machine or a computer running, you know, um, Apple Mac OS. Once you have the web server set up, that web server will be serving the web page to our web browser. The web browser I use in this tutorial is Edge, and you can also use any type of other browser I desire. Just know that Edge and Chrome, they are the same now because Edge is based on the Chromium engine. So any browser using Chrome, any modern web browser, you should be able to follow along without any problems. This web browser, of course, uses a variety of technologies, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in order to display the data that will be getting from it, from the web server. We'll be using a variety of JavaScript libraries to do things like making gauges and making graphs and of course communicating with the web server. We'll also be using HTML in order to lay out our page and CSS to style our page. As you'll see, if we don't use CSS, the page will tend to be very bland and using CSS with Bootstrap, we'll be able to overcome this. You can also use a modern you know, um, 
framework on the front end, something like React or Vue or Angular, if you study here, but in order to keep things simple in this course, I'll just be using HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. These technologies combine to give us our web page, and then that web page gives us our dashboard. This dashboard will display the sensor data and also allow us to control the Arduino. Something not to mention about the sensor. The sensor that we're using here is a very simple resistive potentiometer, but we can substitute it for any type of sensor, including something like a, a proximity sensor, a motion sensor, or something like a rain and light sensor. Any type of sensor will be able to work with this setup. And another thing I want to note is that from our dashboard, we will be communicating with Flask, and that Flask will communicate with the Arduino, and we'll be using the Arduino to turn on an LED. So using the setup, we get, you know, um, full duplex bidirectional communication between the Arduino and the web browser, and we'll use it to turn on our LED. But this LED is not the only thing that we could be able to turn on. Using the setup, we'll be able to control any type of actuator, including something like a relay board, or a light bulb, or a fan, or a pump, or basically any type of actuator, peripheral, or device that we desire. So stay tuned. As we continue in the course, I'll cover the entire setup as you go along the way, we'll learn a lot of stuff, including using, you know, the web server technologies on the front end, the back end, we'll be looking at writing the Arduino code, writing Python scripts, we learn things like Socket.io, things like Flask, we'll also be, you know, learning technologies like Bootstrap and, you know, asynchronous programming. There's a lot of things that this course teaches at Lizzy Foundation that you'll be able to use to create more complex IIT projects. So see you in the next section.